Hey, what is up everybody? So we are now taking our final cruise in the purple truck with the stock ECU. And uh, hopefully uh, hopefully we can get this thing all tuned up within the next couple days. Uh, hopefully I'm not being too hopeful. I uh, just gotta make sure I can get a test light to mess with the distributor and everything else. I'll show you guys how I'm gonna do that, hopefully. And uh, that's pretty much it. So hopefully this, is, uh, this last drive goes good. And once I get the ECU in, we'll be driving the same way again. Now we're gonna go start setting up the ECU. So what's that? what that's gonna involve is running the wire we have still down here. I think we're going to end up running just the blue wire all the way down towards the ECU. The ECU is under the passenger side seat. So I'm gonna disconnect the bolts for the seat and just kind of push it forward in the cab. And I'm going to pull off that piece of trim and that piece of trim down there. That way I can run some wires and everything like that. So I'm gonna go do all that stuff now and uh, I'll see you when I do it. So I actually ended up just pulling the seat. It was just the four bolts. You got one here, one on the other side, one back here, one on the other side. And uh, we've removed all this trim. I put it all in the bed for now so I can keep track of it. And uh, I threw the seat in the black truck for now. I was like, eh, why not make life a little easier? And uh, yeah, I was, it was better off to pull it anyway because it sits towards the front of the seat. Anyway, right down here, we have a 10 millimeter bolt <coughs> that holds the ECU in place. There may be another one on the other side. Um, yeah, right down here, it looks like there's gonna be another mount. So we're gonna pull the stock ECU out and uh, get this cover off it too. Oh. Okay, I guess the cover just pulls off. I was, I was worried I just broke it off there. But yeah, hopefully uh, when we pull the ECU, if we have any issues, it can always go back in, I think, and we can drive the truck then. But I'm pretty confident that we'll be able to figure it out with the new ECU to get the truck running. And uh, right here is probably like a 10, maybe 12, and a 10 millimeter bolt probably. And you unscrew this and this pulls the wiring harness out of the ECU. All right, we have now removed our ECU. Um, I'm thinking I'm probably going to go unplug the battery and then uh, plug in the new ECU. I don't know why I feel like that's necessary, but I don't know. I guess just to be on the safer side so we don't short anything out trying to plug it in. And uh, basically when we plug in the new ECU, you literally just bolt it down with some self-tappers. So I think we're going to go do all of that right this minute. So I'm over at the ECU now. And one thing I am actually going to set up right now, and it's why we removed some of the trim, is we're going to set this up right now. Literally, it just plugs into that five-prong post right there. And you just screw it in. All right, so we've gotten our, uh, they call it a serial wire. It's a DVI port, but we're going to run our serial wire. And I'm going to start screwing this thing in. You just want to make sure it's... It's even as it, as it screws itself into place so all the pins connect. All right, so we've gotten the ECU kind of in place where I want it. I cut out a little bit more carpet, and I'm going to send a self-tapper right there and probably right back there. I, think, uh, I don't think it grounds out through the casing at all. So I just have these two self-tappers here with a hex head so they don't strip out. And I'm going to add these now. Our ECU is now bolted down. I mean, that is not going anywhere. Like I said, bam, bam, good to go. I'm not going to do all four because it'd be impossible to get one here. And uh, I could probably have sent one up there, but I'm just being lazy. And uh, so I was going to run this serial output. I've seen some guys come all the way up to here and run them through like their glove box. But to be honest, my laptop's probably going to be on my passenger seat all the time. So I'm actually probably just going to leave this wire hidden under here, you know, zip tie it up. So I just have enough to come up and plug it into my computer. So that's fine for now. Um, I'm actually going to just leave this out. And uh, I think the next thing we're going to run is our vacuum hose. This is the hose they provide you with. They even provide you with a little T, which is uh, right in these plastic little containers. So a lot of this is the hardware for one of the serial adapters where you pin it yourself. These are the all those pins that just fell out were the pins. And um, right here is the little T we'll need for the hose. Okay, so like I was saying, we're going to run our vacuum hose, and I think I forgot to say what it was. So essentially, the reason I went with the uh, standalone ECU before, you know, turboing it or anything like that was because this has a built-in mass airflow sensor, and I know it sounds goofy, but instead of trying to find a way to run a mass airflow sensor or paying the extra $100 for one for the 240SX intake, uh, I was just like, well, I'll buy the ECU and save myself the money in the long run because after I did the intake, I was going to do the ECU anyway. So why, you know, why spend the extra money? So uh, we're going to take this and we're going to run it probably through my firewall somehow, somewhere down here with the wiring harness or somewhere where it won't get pinched by any means because this is something you don't want to have pinch. It's a good tough vacuum line and we're going to run it. It's just a little T that's going to go right off of this uh, fuel pump regulator. And actually right here is where we'll disconnect it. So we don't even have to disconnect anything besides just the hose. 
Well, mid installation, I uh, I need some longer hose. I just measured it out. I'm gonna go pick up eight feet of vacuum hose and I have a little fitting to test the size I need because that hose is not long enough. So I'm actually gonna end up pulling it, keep it as an extra. I have a little fitting for the size I need and uh, I'll be right back. All right, boys, this foo has just gotten his, uh, his vacuum hose so we can uh, go apply this on the truck now. We'll rip out the hose I just ran through the firewall and. We'll start running this one. Hey, what's up, guys? So really quickly, uh, I'm just going to try to give you a fast rundown. So basically, if you go to tunerstudio.com, you can go to download and download the proper uh, Tuner Studio for a device you're running. So for me, I have Windows 11. So I just ran the Megalog Viewer MS 4.4.4364 bit right here. And you that's just for uh, your logs if you want to run if you want to run that but for tuner studio i'm running the windows 10 windows 8 7 whatever right here alternate uh download so you download that it'll bring you uh it'll bring you out to here and essentially this is for logs that's not very important right now uh you can open up megascore tuner studio which i think is right already open so what i'll do actually is uh actually we're going to open up the megalog viewer and that'll bring us to the site. You can click buy now. And this is going to show you all different kinds of uh, things. Basically, I wanted one with uh, auto-tune. I watched the video. This guy showed a really cool thing right here. I bought the $100 Tuner Studio and Mega Log Viewer HD Combo. So this will allow me to view, like make logs. And that way I'll have more analytic data. And we also have auto tune with the Tuner Studio Mega Squirt. So that's how I set this up. Now we're going to open it up and uh, we're going to go outside to the truck, set up the computer, and we're going to open this back up because I think to even run anything on here, I need to have the truck plugged in. So I'm going to go outside and test that next. All right, so I'm in my kitchen now and uh, we have to download the base map. And I went to Mega Squirt PMP uh to index and i i just typed that into google hit enter and it brings me to this website this is what the top of the website will look like and uh just want to go down in on the bottom of your ecu it'll say some numbers i gotta go out and double check mine but uh i think it says 3.4.3 but the closest option is the 3.4.4 so i'll probably just end up downloading that map anyway and like i said it's just a base map to get us started all right, and right down here, I had to disconnect it real quick, is where we would find our numbers. Try to get that to focus. 3.4.4. So that is the exact one we want, the NS89-94. to uh, This, I actually do need to state that all of this is for if you are OBD1. Uh, I don't know if there's... There's probably going to be different steps if you're OBD2. A lot of things are a little different between the engines. So something to just kind of take into take into account. All right, so we did go outside and check, and this is the file we want is 3.4.4. So it's going to download now, and I'm going to try to figure out how to plug that in. All right, so I'm guessing I'm a little ahead of myself. We're actually going to go outside, plug in the battery, and just turn the key in the truck. We're not going to start it. I think I need to start the truck, plug this in to get a uh project going and then once i have my project open i can download the base map so i feel like people come across a lot of issues when they get to this part <clears throat> and it's uh plugging in the computer to to get it to read with the ecu so i have this cable i had to order but separate from best buy it's dvi to usb we're gonna hope it works so why don't you just turn the key to auxiliary and gotta turn that All right, now I think I can create a project. Let's see how this goes. Purple D21. All right, next. Hopefully, like I said, hopefully this goes well. Uh, ECU configuration is required. Please provide a valid ECU configuration file. Okay, so I will be back. I just had to hit detect, okay. So, I think I think uh, trying to download the files from over here was actually a good thing. And uh, we're going to accept that, because why not? All right, now we have a firmware. Now we can hit next. And yes, okay. So, we uh, have to fill out a bunch of information. And this is where me having zero experience in what we're doing is uh, 
It's going to be pretty tricky, but I do have an oxygen sensor. Yeah, we are using a wideband. Temperature, yeah, obviously Fahrenheit. I don't know what this is, so we'll leave it. Uh, there's a lot of these things actually I really don't know what they are, so I'll probably just leave them as they are for right now uh, Coolant temp. I'll just leave that off because I don't have a coolant temperature sensor I don't think well, I do but we'll leave it off right now. We, I think we can go back in and change them later uh, I don't know what any of this is so we're just gonna keep hitting next. Maybe we can hit it says successful. It says test port. I think we're just gonna hit next and uh, Wow, this is this is gonna be sick. I am I am actually really excited it says select dashboard that one's looking a little crazy for me. That one's looking a little crazy. <clears throat> just, trying, just trying to find something real simple. I like that one. That one's not too bad. Just get to take you guys with me. This is a fun adventure. Wow, all these are not great. It's okay. I'll choose one and I'll see you guys when we get in there. Well, would you look at that? It's, uh, it is reading, I think, already, which is... Kind of sick, actually. Like, I'm I'm really happy with how well this is going, to be super honest with you guys. So we haven't done a ton in this video, but it is a longer video of just me describing how to set this up. I think in the next couple of videos, because I don't think I'll be able to do it all in one, is we are going to try to tune it all ourselves. Uh, there's a small chance that I can't and I have to bring it to someone, and that's, uh, that's completely okay. But uh, in the next couple of videos, I'm going to be showing you guys how I go about tuning it, not how you should, because... I have a lot to learn as we go. So uh, I think the last thing I gotta do is maybe just run my wideband uh, gauge wires all the way to the ECU and see if we can get those to read. Because right now, I don't think, it does say AFR, but there's nothing moving. And uh, it wouldn't because the truck isn't running. So uh, I think we're just gonna run that next and go from there. So on the computer, right over here, it says our input for 21 would essentially be the third pin in. So I have this little adapter. Sorry, it's a little hard to get the camera to focus on so many small things. I have this little adapter here. I'm going to take my pin, find pin number uh, 21. So flip this upside down, go three in. And I'm literally just going to push this all the way through, probably up until that metal is completely in this, uh, this fixture. And then uh, we're gonna plug it into the ECU and uh, we'll go outside. So this is just basically just a fast fit just to see how this works. And uh, there you are. There you have it. You have this casing that goes around the pins. I might even have to push this pin in a little bit further because we don't we don't want a loose connection there by any means. Well, I think the last thing I'm going to try to do really quick before I uh, close up this vid is I'm going to try to run these two wires. Um, I think I have to run them both over to the ECU. Uh, I don't think I have to to start the truck, though, but I guess it would be nice just to have that reading anyway. And I know I still got to run a little bit more proper uh, section for that positive cable. But I, uh, I'm i going to try to run this to where I think it would be ran, and I'll let you guys know what I get for results. You know what? Just for the hell of it, without setting up the AFR gauge, I'm just going to fire this thing up real quick and uh, see, see what happens. Uh, if it sounds horrific... And it might be a little cheesy at the start. Then we'll just, you know, we'll just turn it right off. But uh, what's the, what's the harm in starting it real quick? So I don't even need my clutch because we haven't fixed that gauge yet. So it's running a little different, but honestly, not that bad. Like, let's be super real here. What are we reading? I guess it's just a good video for myself. Wow, I, I, it actually sounds like I could probably almost drive the truck like this. That is not bad. Give it a little rev. Oh, no. If I try to rev it, it hates life. Well, at least we can idle. So we're going to run what I think I need to run first. And I think that's this wire going to the 21st pin. And I even took my uh, my pliers and stuffed it in there a little bit more. And if it's not the right pin, that's okay. We can just repin it after. But uh, I think I'm actually going to have to run the blue wire as well. I don't know. It said serial wire and uh, oxygen is 21. So we're just going to plug it in. I'll uh, I'll set all the, the thing up later on. But I just want to see if we can get an AFR gauge reading somehow, some way, somewhere. Okay, so I just had it all backwards. So yes, it is the bottom, the, the at the very bottom 
right, you'd go like one, two, three, and then pin it. And that is the blue serial wire that goes to my AFR gauge. So this is reading 13.2 and this thing's going kind of berserk, but the truck isn't on. So I think I have that all set. I don't think I need to run the second wire. Um, we'll figure it out as we go, obviously. But I think, uh, I think this calls for another start check. Just to see how this really reads. Um, so this is saying, I mean, that's all over the place. I don't think that really knows what to read. I don't even, I don't even know what that's trying to read. 8, 12. I mean, this right here is giving me a clear 12.8, 13. This thing is going berserk. So maybe I do need to run the second wire. I'll, uh, I'll look into it. Maybe I'll run it just for the hell of it and see how it goes. All right, guys, I'm feeling pretty accomplished right now. So the white wire goes to t pin 21 and the blue wire goes to pin 22. So right now we have nothing. I take uh, I take this little piece. Don't worry, I'll, I'll fasten it all together before uh, we're really driving the truck. But we take this and gently plug it in and bam. It's saying we got a 12.7 AFR. Up here is reading 13.5. That's really stagnant. So I'm gonna start the truck. Okay, it moved. We're gonna start the truck and see if the gauges match. But I think I have to um, calibrate my gauges and start setting up everything in the computer, telling it how, you know what injectors I'm running, things like that. It's all factory, but I'm sure that's what maybe the base map covers. I don't know. We'll just go in and check it, but start test. All right, we'll find out in a minute. So it's saying 10.5 and my gauge up here is reading 11.9. That's reading 12 and that's reading 10. So yeah, okay, I can I can kind of follow through with that a bit. I would like to uh, connect it a little bit better and uh, I still don't think I can rev it. Nope, it dies. So all things, uh, I think that's when I can start using the auto tune. But I think, uh, I think that's gonna wrap up this video right now. Uh, I just wanted to show you guys how to install it today. We did get the truck started, so I think that's very important. And we're going to come back to this and start just showing you guys the process of what I do to tune it. So, for real, thank you all for checking out today's video. I'm trying to make some videos to show you guys how to build your KA24E in your Nissan hard body. Remember, this is for OBD1 uh, specifically. So, you might be able to take some pointers if you're on OBD2, but... I'm not too sure what the similarities or differences would be as far as setting up the MSPMP2. All right, guys. Thanks so much for checking it out. Like and subscribe. Peace.